the constant bashing of Manchester United is becoming tiring now. It's becoming absolutely tiring and frustrating. And I'm not going to lie, I'm triggered by it. Because everything we do is spun into a negative. Largely by our own fans, if it's about a player or an individual or a situation that we that we want to be negative about. And I've just got to a point where I think to myself, am I wrong? Am I wrong for feeling positive about things so far this summer? Am I wrong for believing that we're at the beginning of a new rebuild? Or are we really in trouble? Are we really... Are we King Canute? Demanding the tide goes out, but with no real control at all. Are we as Man United fans living in cloud cuckoo land about how good we've looked in pre-season, about the signings that have come in so far, about what Ten Hag is going to be able to do? Are we going to end up back in the same situation? Are we still having massive, massive problems at the club? I want your thoughts and I want your feelings on this, people, because I'm frustrated. <laughs> Mentioning about Manchester United be, not being as big as a pool for a while now, and Man United fans don't like it. You know, um, they can't handle the the straight facts. De Jong, if he's leaving Barcelona, he does not want to go to Manchester United. You know, there's quotes that that have come out that he would rather a Bayern Munich, he'd rather a Chelsea. Because if I'm choosing a team in the Premier League and I've got a chance of Chelsea or Manchester United, I'm choosing Chelsea. I'm in London. I've got Thomas Tuchel, who's won the Champions League recently. You're playing Champions League football this season. You've got a better squad of players. Manchester United have got Ronaldo, who don't want to be there. You know, he's not turned up for pre-season. You've got players that aren't performing. You've, got, you've lost top players like Pogba. You know, Manchester United have got problems, and it's going to take them a while to get a chance of winning the Premier mm. League. Win I'm listening to what Gabby Abongle is, is saying here. And there's so much I kind of agree with and some that I disagree with. So, firstly, I, I think there isn't a Man United fan worth his salt that believes that Frankie Dion would pick Man United over Chelsea or Bayern Munich if they were serious. The frustrating part about what he said is there are reports and links suggesting that he wants Chelsea or Barcelona over Man United. But that also goes against ignoring the body of work and the reports from very credible journalists, including Talk Sports' very own Alex Cook, who's their their transfer correspondent, that he is open to joining Man United. He's willing to join Man United, and it's very much the deferred wages that's stopping the deal. And that's where my frustration comes in with the media. A bungalow is entitled to his opinion, but his opinion stems from the negative reports. There is no research or at least the, the research has been ignored into the positive things being said about Man United. That's where I'm annoyed. That's where I'm frustrated. It's always a focus on, well, I think it, they picked Chelsea over Man United, Man United got problems. You know, he goes on to say in this that, oh, you know, Ronaldo wants to leave, it's a big problem. Well, it really isn't. He's got one year left. I know that it can be extended for a year. He's going to have one more year left at the club. And why does he want to leave? He wants to leave because we can't win the Champions League. We're not playing in the Champions League next year. And he wants to be in the Champions League. At 37 years of age, it's completely acceptable. But what has Ronaldo said? He believes United are in the right direction. The manager is the right person to take him forward. But it's the way it gets spun into Ronaldo wants to leave. Pogba's gone. This is the same network who consistently told us that Paul Pogba was trash. Paul Pogba was inconsistent. Paul Pogba wasn't any good. Now it's a problem that he's left. That's my point here. Every single time something happens, it's a negative with Man United. It's a negative, it's a negative, it's a negative. Or am I wrong? Am I wrong to see positivity in some of these things? Am I wrong to see positivity with Man United moving a player on that didn't really want to be here? Am I wrong to see positivity in moving on a 37, 38-year-old with one year left on his contract and bringing in somebody with a future at the club. There, I'm not saying it's all positive, but there are positives to it. Am I wrong to focus on some of those positives rather than always dwelling in the dark? Always, you know, being a fungus fan, being a mushroom. I want you to tell me, am I wrong? Am I wrong in this? Because all I'm getting every day is that we're in a disaster, we're in a mess. 
Christian Eriksen linked to rival clubs. Oh, what a free signing. What a ball. Oh, what a resurgence. Look where he's come from. Man United signed Christian Eriksen. You've got Bruno, though. Why do you need him? He ain't going to play. He ain't world class. Waste of money. Why, why'd you get him? Oh, look at Arsenal. They're looking at the Sandro Martinez, one of the best ball playing, progressive, modern day centre backs in the game. He's versatile. He can move at left back. He can move into midfield. Oh, look at the footage. Look at the stats. Look at what he did for Ajax last year. Champions League quality. Arsenal with the pool. Manchester United have just signed the Sandro Martinez. Yeah, but he's bloody short. Like him and Danny DeVito, they're like twins, bruv. Is it going to work in the Prem? What are Man United doing spending that much money on him? Oh, I'm not too sure if it's the right deal for him. Every time we do something, it's spun into a negative. And then I look at the fans. Maguire booed the other day. I'm in two minds about it. I, I still am. I, I get why people boo him. I get that. I get that Man United fans need to... I get the men that players, sorry, need to understand that fans are still angry about last year. And you saw Bruno's comments earlier on this week where he stated that there's more discipline now. There's a lack of discipline at the club. Exactly what I told you would start coming out. As sure as eggs are eggs, players weren't trying hard. Players weren't disciplined. Players weren't working. That's why it all fell apart last year. Rightly or wrongly, that's what happened. The players are still going to catch strays from last year. Because as good as preseason's been, as great as the managers here, we're still looking at certain individual players. And Maguire has never really taken ownership for his bad performances. So I get the booze. I also understand, though, that there's, there's an infighting because, well, we're saying it's a new era and we're saying it's everyone gets a fresh slate. But certain players aren't getting a fresh slate, are they? So I'm not doing that. I, I, if I was at the ground, I wouldn't boo any of the players. I'm saying fresh slate. Let's see what the new manager does. But it's the... It's the mushrooms. It's the picking and the choosing on who gets another chance or not. Maguire don't get another chance. Rashford ain't getting another chance. Shaw's not getting another chance. Bruno's not getting another chance. AWB ain't getting another chance. The low does, though. Fred does. Martial does. Sancho does. Varane does. Why? People were umming and ahhing on David De Gea. It seems like we want to now because he's had some good distribution. Why do some people get a fresh slate and others don't? Now, I'm not asking people to change their minds about the players. I don't think Maguire should stay. But I'm willing to relax on pushing that agenda until I see what happens with the team. But this is what I mean. Everything around Man United is so negative. Why can't... I'm not saying fans shouldn't have opinions. I'm not saying fans shouldn't express themselves. But it's a consistent belly aching. And you'll go for a thread of someone's and it's, oh, Sancho's going to cook next year. He's going to be amazing. The very next tweet is, we need to get Rashford out now. Absolute holding us back. Absolute charlatan. Absolute dead baller. What's going through these people's minds? And for me, it stems back down to this, just like a bungle horse doing in this video. And I'm bringing this all round to a point now. There's two things going on here. Either I'm wrong and people like me are wrong for looking at United through a positive lens, knowing there's problems, knowing we need to improve, knowing it isn't going to be perfect year one, but having a positive slant on things and waiting to see the fruits of Ten Hag's labour before we overtly judge. Equally, still ring-fencing the new regime from the owners and demanding that we continually get better, spend money and improve. Am I wrong for doing that? Or is this continual sitting in the negative space just about popularity, just about traction, just about... You know, going with the crowd. Every time I see a journalist or a pundit talk negatively about Man United, they ignore so many other opinions. I watch and I listen to these other channels and I'm like, where is the other side of the argument? Where are the representation from the Man United fans who look at it from a positive standpoint, who can challenge the negative points of view, who offer a different opinion? Because I believe the two things go hand in hand. It, it becomes self-fulfilling. Oh, I'm going to be negative because the popular opinion is negative. Yeah, but you've got to make sure you're positive about the right people. You, you can't be negative about these two or three players or these two or three situations, but you can about these. And it's like they differentiate to create this weird equilibrium between being negative and being positive. And then all the media does is perpetuate that by repeat the same nonsense. And it is nonsense. 
And it's nonsense in the sense that you get presented one side of the argument or one element of the story and not the rest. And it triggers me. I'm not even going to lie. I'm annoyed about it. It's every day. It's the same crap. Whether we sign someone. We even got ridiculed this year for not spending more on Malassia. That's the irony in this. Ridicule for spending too much on the Sandro. Ridicule for not spending enough on Malassia. And this is why I'm imploring fans. I'm, I'm not telling you what to do. I'm asking. Hold back on your agendas for a moment. Let's see what the mainstream media does when we're being more positive. I'm just intrigued. I can experiment. I want to see. Because I believe they just repeat things they see in tweets because they see that it's popular. I believe the media is actually being led, led by the mushrooms, if I'm being honest. But the problem with the mushrooms is they know if they're not negative enough about the right people, they lose traction. And what's going to be really intriguing is this. I'm going to make you this prediction now. If the football goes well and certain fans are on the uh, players, sorry, that are on the chopping block, start playing well. You watch the fungus fans change overnight. You watch the mushrooms opinions change within the element of a tweet. And instead of, and it's not about flip-flopping. Flip-flopping is a, is a banter concept. You're allowed to change your mind. But you watch them, you watch them change their minds without addressing they were wrong in the first place. And I'm sorry, I, that annoys me. As a man, when you get something wrong, you say, I was wrong about that. Been surprised, been shocked, didn't see that coming. It's not going to happen. They just jump on the next bandwagon. And I don't know, it's something about it winds me up. Some may ask, why do you care? And we're in the business of opinions. <laughs> and my opinion is it's wrong. My opinion is it stinks. My opinion is you're being fake. My opinion is that you're... I'm not saying you're not being a Man United fan. I just feel as though you're using negative slants at the club to fulfill a different hole in your life. And I want to understand why. It does trigger me and it winds me up. And I feel like you're dragging my club through the mud more than it needs to. And I want to know why you do it. Do you really, is it really your opinion? Is it really your opinion? Or is it what you do to maintain popularity? Listen, I could be wrong. You could be right. It could be vice versa. I'm open to it. I want your views and your opinions. Am I wrong for looking at some things this summer, at least, as a positive at Manchester United? Give me your thoughts. Give me your feelings.